Hey everyone, Exceldum here. I have recently beaten the Fire Emblem Engage on Maddening Classic difficulty, and so I'd like to share my thoughts, as spoiler free as possible, in case you're on the edge of whether you should get this game or not. In brief, I really like this game. For me, it hits on nearly every aspect, its presentation, its story, and absolutely its gameplay. Oh, the gameplay. First of all, the game's presentation is amazing. It looks and sounds great, with high cutscene and music quality throughout the entire game. This is consistent all the way up to the finale and does not fall off at all. Combat animations are smooth, cutscenes are great, and overall the game feels very polished. Second, the story. The beginning of the story is rather standard but steadily ramps up to being pretty exciting. Then there's a little dip in quality in the middle but after that it really gets going. And by the end of the game I really felt like it was one of the best Fire Emblem stories I've ever experienced. The third act of the game especially is amazing. It recontextualizes a ton of things you see in earlier parts and in my opinion, it blows every other game out of the water in terms of execution and presentation. It's absolutely not the most original story in the world and it adopts ideas from other Fire Emblem games but simply executes them so well. But something more that I really appreciate is the strength of its gameplay story integration. You spent a lot of the game fighting over the control of the emblem rings, and it definitely feels like they are the powerful weapons of war that the story makes them out to be. This is something I felt was lacking in previous titles. In Three Houses, the crests are hyped up by the story be so powerful they shake national culture and politics, but in gameplay they're like what? You have a 20% chance of plus 5 damage when you use combat arts? I mean, come on, that's pathetic. Here, the emblems are amazingly powerful. You can do tons of crazy stuff, like having full map heals, multi-tile 100% accurate nukes, AoE warp stabs, and other ridiculously powerful mechanics. They feel just as strong as the story makes them out to be. And the best part, despite being probably the most power you'll ever get in any Fire Emblem game, it's not overkill. You need that much power to survive in Madding difficulty. For the most part, I only play the story maps, of which there are 26. Though I did complete 3 or so paralog chapters out of 15, since I was rushing to beat the game as fast as I could. By counting the total amount of time in my endgame stats, I found that I spent 28 or so hours completing maps. So I spent around 22 hours watching cutscenes, reading supports, doing small tasks in Insomnia, organizing my inventory, and so on. And I expect on future playthroughs, this downtime can be drastically reduced. The activities in Insomnia are for the most part, fairly skippable even for an optimal playthrough. My total stream time was around 56 hours, so I wasted just under 6 or so hours resetting maps, but for the most part, I was able to get through them without too much wasting time, even on maddening difficulty. So now, let's get to the most important part, how the gameplay feels. The gameplay is amazing. The gameplay from the beginning on Maddening Difficulty it feels really finely tuned, expertly crafted, it's extremely tight, and with how perfectly some units deal with specific circumstances, it just it just felt good. Though hilariously sometimes it also felt like the game was designed so it constantly one damage off of various thresholds, but Early on, I didn't use all the mechanics like tonics or meals very often, so that probably could have helped smooth things out. On Maddening Difficulty, I found the early game to actually be pretty easy. In terms of challenge, I will compare it to Fate's Conquest early game. But as you get through, there are several difficulty spikes around chapter 10 to 11 and around chapter 17. But overall, both times, I felt I was able to meet the challenge. But the best part of the game was for me was absolutely the ending sequence. The last 10 or so maps were an absolute joy to play through. They all felt amazing to play with challenging and interesting gimmicks and mechanics. I was using every trick and exploit I could imagine and even then I was still just barely skirting by. But there were multiple times in the ending maps where it feels like the developer put in a specific counter to obvious exploits that you would try and succeed with in any other Fire Emblem game. Overall, it felt like the map designers really knew what they were doing. I would say that in terms of difficulty, Fire Emblem Engage is probably one of the hardest FE games on Manning difficulty. I would say that the difficulty is comparable to Fire Emblem Fates Conquest Lunatic Endgame, Fire Emblem 12 Hard 3 Endgame, and Fire Emblem 5 3776's Endgame. So if you enjoyed those endgames, you'll probably enjoy this one as well. The stat inflation of enemies gets quite high, and the enemy stats are much much higher in Manning than in Hard Mode, but if you play your cards right, you would absolutely have the right tools to deal with it. You get a ton of powerful stabs like warp, rewarp, rescue, obstruct which lets is essentially a, a free shine barrier every turn and you really are not starving for uses for any of these. Now let me elaborate more on specifics about why the gameplay is great. I feel like many of the problems that classic fire emblem suffers from are clearly dealt with through map design and game mechanics. There's almost a complete lack of one tile choke points on any map 
and for the most part are constantly being flanked by enemies so you're constantly being put in legitimate danger. There are basically no ambush reinforcements. While many maps still do have reinforcements, they often spawn from very obvious locations, from forts, from stairs, from the edge of the map, and you can often predict where they come from. You often have at least one or two turns to react to them before they reach you. And by doing this, the game does a great job of putting soft time pressure on you. There are only a few maps with hard time limits, and the others are constantly throwing strong enemies at you in a way that overwhelms you slowly rather than instantly. Oftentimes, I found that turtling is just a worse strategy most of the time because you'll be spending your limited resources, your emblems, your engages, fighting off more enemies when it's often just easier to go and try to kill the boss. Another thing I found really quite amazing about Fire Emblem Engage on Maddening Difficulty are all of the anti juggernauty mechanics. There are enemies that ignore defense, there are chain attacks which can hit you for percent HP damage, and there's a great amount of enemy variety, so you really need a diverse toolkit to survive. I think it's probably impossible to solo the game with a single character. You really need a full developed team to make it through. There's also an increased amount of variety in character roles. Even the most trained knight can very easily die to enemy mages. And this becomes a problem on manning difficulty because nearly every pack of enemies has a mix of physical and magic enemies. Furthermore, on banning difficulties, enemies even have that conquest AI quirk where they won't attack you if they do zero damage or have zero hit. Also, fighting bosses in this game feels amazing. Nearly every boss has multiple health bars and can never be killed in one round, meaning that boss kills are not only a matter of just sending your best guy at them, but more frequently, a struggle that will require your entire team to take on. The emblems all feel extremely powerful and will definitely shape how you play, and more importantly, emblem engages are temporary, so while they can give you a temporary advantage, they will never make a unit invincible. Because of the soft time pressure and the difficulty of recharging your emblems while you're hurrying through a map, I've often found that I've had to parcel out their use instead of blowing them all immediately. The emblems are so full of character and power that often I frequently refer to characters by the emblem names they have equipped instead of the actual character. And finally, let's talk a bit about the DLC. For the most part, the DLC isn't too impactful. It definitely helps smooth out the early game parts of the run by giving you some free stat boosters and steel weapons, which are nice, but not something that's too game breaking. The bracelet with Edelgard, Demetri, and Claude is quite useful, but it's not that overpowered. I hear that the Tiki bracelet is actually quite strong, but I personally didn't even try to get it in Manning Difficulty because her map looks really, really hard. You definitely will not need the DLC to have an enjoyable experience. Overall, I give Fire Emblem Engage my highest recommendation and I think it may be one of my favorite Fire Emblem games ever. It looks great, it sounds great, the gameplay is amazing, and the non-gameplay elements are very skippable if you don't want to do them. If you're a fan of the more difficult Fire Emblem games, then you will almost definitely enjoy Fire Emblem Engage on maddening difficulty. I'm so excited to play the game again with a different team composition and of course make videos about it as well. Thanks for watching, remember to like and subscribe and see you all in the next one.